Hello everybody and welcome back to some Kerbal Space Program and welcome back to some BD Armoury. Yes, today we are going to try and design a new fighter, something to replace my Dragonflies. Now the Dragonfly is one of my favourite designs, uh, just because it's the first really unconventional fighter I ever designed. However, it's not that good in combat, so I think much as I'm fond of it, we need a replacement. So uh, we're going to go see if we can design something for that, something with a similar design philosophy. But before then, I want to I want to try a quick experiment, and the experiment's going to require a bit of explaining. So I'll try and be quick. Here goes. Most aircraft, most civilian and commercial aircraft, are aerodynamically stable, and when you deviate from straight and level flight, this induces a negative feedback loop which tries to drag it back. What that means in practical terms is you deviate from straight and level flight, the aircraft will eventually just naturally drift back towards straight and level flight, that is unless you've done something really stupid and left one of your wings in a tree half a mile back. Now, for uh, for commercial and civilian aircraft, this is fine. It means when you're turning, you're fighting the forces of nature, of course, but uh, that's not really too much of a problem, as most civilian and commercial aircraft uh, aren't really flown anywhere close to the limits of their aerodynamic capabilities. For jet aircraft, however, for military jet aircraft, it's a bit different, because you don't want to be fighting the forces of nature when you turn, you don't want to be fighting anything when you turn, because ability to turn is a life-and-death matter in some cases. In fact, if at all possible, you want the forces of nature to be giving you a little nudge into the turn. Because of this, modern fighter jets are designed to be aerodynamically unstable. Now, of course, this does pose a few problems, but uh, normally a control system is added to make sure that the aircraft can sustain straight and level flight when it's needed, and also that it doesn't just flip out. Now, in Kerbal Space Program, this, things are done a little bit different. Aerodynamic stability is achieved by having the centre of lift behind the centre of mass. Uh, it is possible in Kerbal Space Program to make uh, a slightly more traditionally stable aircraft that uh, will just fly without using stability assist, but uh, it's... Well, Kerbal Space Program doesn't simulate the aerodynamics in, a, in enough depth to get things like roll stability, so it's best just to, you know, put the centre of uh, lift behind the centre of mass, have uh, flat wings, and just keep stability assist on. Uh, also, it, making an aircraft unstable in Kerbal Space Program isn't really an option because, well, the, the, the control system that's uh, sort of inbuilt into uh, Kerbal Space Program, the stability assist, isn't, uh, isn't sufficient to actually keep the aircraft from flipping out. So um, that's not really an option, but I thought, well, what if we can take something from that idea? What if there's just a little something we can take and can build into one of these cyclone craft here that just sort of... that might give us a bit of an edge? So uh, I've come up with this. But wait, isn't that exactly the same craft? Well, almost, but not quite. I haven't made a big change, but I've taken this idea of an aircraft that wants to turn, and I've sort of, well, looked at most military fighter jet aircraft, and even when you just do BD Armoury on KSP, almost all the time the big, hard, hard, tight turns are done when the aircraft is trying to pitch up with respect to its own frame of reference. So all I've done is I've gone, I've put in a slight kink in the back of these wings. It doesn't look like a lot, but uh, when you actually look at it from above, it's it's quite a fair chunk of the uh, quite a fair chunk of the wing area, and that what that produces is a, is a craft that wants to turn upwards, that wants to pitch up, and the uh, the control system has to kick in and sort of keep it flying straight and level, which is kind of what we want. It's just a small difference, but I want to see if it actually produces any different in actual combat results, and we are going to do that the traditional way. Let's get them into the air. So, here we go. Everything looking good so far. All craft taking off. Um, the Cyclone F1s versus the Cyclone Experimentals. Um, F1 in this case is not like the US style uh, fighter designation. It's more the uh, the British military style where the number following the F isn't, isn't sort of like denoting what model of aircraft it is. It's more like, um, it's more like a version number or a refit number. But uh, anyway, oh, bloody hell, that was a bit close. Uh, yes, anyway, it should keep us to keep track of which one is which, and uh, yes, all should be well. Let's just wait them to get wait for them to get to the uh, prerequisite distance, and then we should have a fight on our hands. Let's see. Yep, these lot doing okay as well, no obvious damage, and here we go. So everybody just turning. 
Oh, there's experiment. They do look like they turn a bit quicker, don't they? Maybe a bit of confirmation bars going on there, but uh, not to worry. Anyway, the game of missile tennis has begun. Everyone diving low to avoid the missiles. Uh, how? Yep, everyone I think has got missiles on their tail. No one seems to be just uh, making their way towards the enemy. I think they'll all miss. Uh, as I said, I've said in previous videos, these are all pretty manoeuvrable craft. They don't got plenty of countermeasures. Ooh, thought that one might be going from just briefly. No, everybody seems to be good. And so here we go with round two. Oh, one of the uh, one of the experimentals has sort of broken off from the rest of them. That's uh, that's brave. Could leave him a bit isolated. Where is everyone else? They're not too far away. Okay, they're a fair distance away. Yeah, that could be bad news. He's got a missile on his tail now. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how this one goes for him, because uh, are they all going to gang up, or are the others, uh, others going to be distracted and allow the others to sneak in there? Oh, that almost looked like... Yes, one of the experimentals has been damaged. Where are you? Oh, that's not looking good news. And um, that is definitely not looking like good news. He's lost all his intakes. Well, that is... Well, that is unexpected. Well, mind you, it is the it is uh, sort of like the missile round, so... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things get on. Oh, it's one of the cyclones gone to a missile, I think, as well. Yeah, looks like that was another direct hit. It's two on two. Uh, more missiles flying in, another missile going off there. Ooh, this suddenly got quite interesting. Closing to gun range, finally. Let's see, how will this do in sort of manoeuvrability when it's trying to aim its guns at the craft? Because, um... Well, without meaning to bore you with the details of resultant aerodynamic forces, it's, it adds a sort of a, a bit of an extra layer of complication when the experimentals are trying to line up their shot. Still going for the missile, I suppose he is three kilometres away, but uh, these others should be closing to gun range. He's taken a bit of damage, but now he's on the tail of one of these ordinary cyclones. Is that just debris landing? I think that's just debris landing. Uh, yeah, he's taken a bit of damage. He should be all right. That was one of the cyclones forced into the ground. I think that was one of the cyclones forced into the ground. This is... And that's one of the experimentals sort of trying to finish him off. Um, hmm, not really getting... I was hoping for more dogfights, more gun range stuff. Oh, and that is the... That is the regular cyclones out of the competition. <laughs> and one of the experimentals just... Throwing in a peppering of gunfire for good measure. Yeah, that was, um... Well, I don't know what I was expecting, really, but, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty definitive result, but, uh... As I said, I was hoping for a bit more close-in gunfighting, but, uh... Hmm. Well, maybe maybe I'll run another one of these one of these off-camera and uh, see what the results are, but, uh... I think it's time we get to building our new craft, and uh, I'll show you the results in a second. So here we have it, the fruits of our labour, the tiger tail, named after a species of dragonfly, in case you're wondering. It's an evolution of the dragonfly design, almost taking it sort of like a step closer towards a conventional aircraft design, but still keeping those distinctive aesthetic features. It's uh, sort of a like-for-like -like replacement for the dragonfly, sort of a single-engine, quick, nippy, short-range, get up, shoot the enemy down, and home in time for tea and medals kind of craft. Uh, I did a lot more refining and balancing with this craft than I did for the dragonfly, so... Hopefully it should be more than a match for it. Hopefully you should even trounce it in combat, but, um... Well, there's only one way to find out. So here we go then. Can the plucky pretenders to the throne triumph over the more established dragonfly? Everyone taking off. Uh, the dragonfly is wobbling a little bit. They're not that good on the ground. Better in the air. That's one of the design flaws of the dragonfly, but... Not a fatal one. I have gone and uh, replayed the uh, sort of the cyclone, the experimental versus the F1 competition a few times, and uh, well, I think it's fair to say the little kink in the wings does makes bugger all difference. But hey, that's why we do those experiments. Some of them succeed, some of them won't. You take the ones that succeed and ditch the rest. Um, everybody getting up to altitude. It'd be very interesting to see how this one goes. Very similarly armed, of course. Um, the same number of guns, the same number of missile pylons. The Tiger Tails have two more pylons that are suitable for the uh, larger Amrams, of course, so they are packing six as opposed to the Dragonfly's four. And here we go, everybody 
time to turn round, time to uh, loose that first volley of missiles. I'm kind of hoping there aren't any missile kills in this one because uh, well, one of the big things we want to see is the uh, the aerodynamic, the aerobatic performance of the tiger tails. That sort of that dog fighting role because uh, well, that's where kind of where those turning competitions are kind of where the dragonfly excels. So we'll see if they can uh, perform as well as their predecessors. Everybody firing on missiles, everybody breaking low to avoid the missiles coming the other way. Uh, I'm not anticipating any missile kills. These are, as I said, all my craft are pretty sufficiently manoeuvrable that we don't normally get missile kills on that first volley. But uh, here we go. The second one can normally be a bit more tricky. Missiles going in again, missiles coming in again. Starting to close to within gun range. Any second now we should... Oh, and this dragonfly gets his gets his air intake blown off, and that is him out. He'll be able to glide down and maybe launch a few missiles on the way, but yeah, he is not long for this fight, and gunfire comes in. Where's that gunfire coming from? Oh, and he gets shredded. Brutal. There goes the tiger tail that did it. Here he is. Switch straight to him. He picks out a new target. Is it going to be guns or missiles? Straight for the guns. It's a bit of a joust, I think. Who's going to come off better? The dragonfly breaks off. I think he had a bit of superficial damage there. Doesn't appear to be anything major. Still manoeuvring quite well. The tiger tail sticks to his man. The roar of those Vulcan cannons once again. Can he shred him? Oh, this is an ideal position. The dragonfly trying desperately to shake him. Might have shaken... Oh! Missiles coming in though. That's another one of the tiger tails. It's two on one here. And that is bad news. Oh! Absolutely shredded there. Uh, there's one. There's another one. There's the other one. Right, I didn't see that one happen, but never mind. The tiger tails. Any, any damage at all? No, I think I think that was a pretty one-sided fight, and I think we have the uh, the answer to our question of whether we have a worthy successor to the Dragonflies. And I think, on the basis of that, the answer is a pretty emphatic yes. Um, but we still have one test left to perform. Now let's see how the Tiger Tails do against the big boys. Yes, it's all very well seeing off the craft that you were designed to replace, but... Uh, how do they do against these cyclones, which were so prolific against their predecessors? Uh, I think I'm expecting the cyclones to win this. They're sort of... well, they're kind of different craft for different roles in a way. These are supposed to be the big, expensive fighters that can take on anything, can uh, do a lot with just a couple of them, and the uh, the uh, tiger tails are sort of more sort of cheap, quick, nimble kind of craft. Um, but uh, so yeah, I'm expecting the, the cyclones to win. But uh, happy to be surprised. How are they getting on? Coming up to about six and a half kilometres away. Before too long, they will turn and fight again. I'm hoping for no missile kills. Well, I think everyone who watches one of these hopes for no missile kills because all well, the dogfights are kind of where it's at. And just to to see the raw manoeuvrability of these craft, see who can triumph in that kind of situation, like the turning competitions. Although I think the Cyclones will have some stiff competition from the Tiger Tails. The first volley of missiles makes its way towards the Tiger Tails. Um, tiger Tails haven't loosed their own, just start loosing their own volley now. And now everybody starts to break low to avoid the incoming missiles. Uh, apart from this guy, I don't think he's got any missiles on him. Nope, this guy just can just make his way in safety towards the opposition as those missiles just come in and narrowly miss his wingmen. Oh, and he's there. He's getting into getting into range, laying guns down onto the cyclone. Can he do any serious damage? The roar of the Vulcan cannons there, but I think it was for nothing. Can he turn and find his mark the second time around? Or has he chosen a different target? I'm not sure what he's doing. A few missiles there still flying around. I think it's 
it's kind of getting right into gun range territory now. That cyclone now on the back of this tiger tail. Huge explosion, what was that? I don't think that was anything, I think that was missiles. This, that's a cyclone getting very close to the KRC there. Ah, uh, this tiger tail still just about managing to shake the cyclone that was on his tail. I think that cyclone had to pull off because he's got a missile coming in. Tiger tail selects a new target. Something just blew up. What was that? That I think was a cyclone. That's one of the cyclones gone. And it could be another one joining him pretty quickly as the tiger tail just opens up with the cannon. Looks like it was just superficial damage. The tiger tail not really going in for the kill there. I, I think, yeah, that's one of the cyclones out. This one, no damage, but it's two versus three. That is not good news. Still got the tiger tail. No longer on his tail. Too many uses of the word tail. Should have called them something different. Is that just more debris falling to the ground? I think that's just more debris falling to the ground. The cyclone trying to join the uh, two-on-one that's going on here. Take some pressure, I think. I... Pressure off his wingman? Yes, I think so. Is the other one over here. Not looking good for the Cyclones. Not looking good at all. What is that flipping out? That was... Um, what is it? What is it? What is it? I think that's... Yeah, that's one of the Cyclones. This the other Cyclone taking some heavy damage. Lost most of one of his wings. The Cyclones are not good when they lose that sort of Delta... Delta uh, wings delta shaped section of that wing they can still fly but it's it's not pretty and oh that is it's surely all over now for the cyclone as the tiger tail just flies past and his wingman just finishes the job oh but is it instant revenge is it instant revenge for the cyclones it's one of the cyclones comes in seems to do some pretty heavy damage no I think the tiger tails all seem to be okay. This one remaining cyclone is not having a good day of it, though. He's got three now on his tail, unless some of the tiger tails have been distracted by his um, his falling comrade. No more. All attention turns to this one cyclone. Ah, uh, he's had better days at the office. Can he get a consolation kill? Can he just? nail that tiger tail so just so it's not a three and all thrashing so gotta start trying to light him up soon before those other tiger tails they're a fair distance away actually throwing missiles in the cyclone has to break for the missile that will allow the other tiger tail to just turn around oh and it just it just scorches the cyclone Oh, it's looking worse and worse and worse. It can't be long now. It's all over bar the shouting. That's, uh, that's a somewhat old-fashioned phrase to be using, but, uh, well, there you go. He tries to turn, just out of control, down to one engine. More damage rains in. Oh, more damage, more and more damage. Can she keep the craft in the air? No, I think that is it for her. Hmm. Wow, I was not expecting that. Yeah, and that's them. Gone. Any damage to any of these tiger tails? Nothing there. Nothing I can see. Oh, this guy. This guy lost one of the nose caps on one of his fuel tanks. And nothing there. I was not expecting that. That was brutal. Absolutely brutal. So there we have it. A new champion of the skies. Uh, so now I suppose it's just a matter of trying to design something that can defeat these guys. Anyway, I think we'll uh, we'll leave it there for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, everybody. So, uh, well, thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.